Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ant Holfer YouTube channel. Today we are taking a look at the Ada Mexicana colony and yeah, they're not dead. For those who don't know their story, the colony got lost in post, considered dead, arrived with all the fungi dead, accepting donor fungi, still not cutting leaves and yeah, that was when I really left the last episode. Today, well, they are not dead and they have actually grown a nicely looking fungi. Today, the colony have recovered greatly. They are in full construction mode and they are now bigger than the Acromyrmyx octoposus colony when I got them. And well, they have exploded quite a lot. So I'm expecting that the Ada will explode soon as well. The big problem with small leafcutter colonies is that they can't really cut leaves fast. I can give them a lot of leaves, but they won't cut it because the fungi is simply too small. As the fungi becomes bigger, well, there'll be more to feed to, and therefore it's an upward cycle of feeding more, growing faster, feeding more, growing faster, and just exploding in numbers. The problem with this is as they are small, they don't really grow fast, they don't really cut that much leaf, and that is why it's quite patiently waiting in the beginning, and why the acro colony is starting to explode, and the other colony is slowly but surely coming back. The big thing that makes the Ada so much more crazy to keep is the monster producing egg laying queen. She can lay an incredible amount of eggs every single day. And although this colony is still recovering to its former glory, you can really see the insane amount of brood around the fungi. There's always these two to three brood chambers within the fungi and it's so amazing to actually be able to see the larvae turn slowly into pupae and then all hatch. As there are different chambers and well, they are not yet covered by the fungi, you can actually follow the brood development. So what I've seen that is quite different from other ant colonies is these brood chambers doesn't really seem to swap around. When a larvae is turned into pupae, it doesn't get moved to another chamber. It stays in the same chamber. This is really awesome because then you can actually follow the larvae turn into pupae and then all hatch and then small eggs becoming larvae becoming pupae and then hatch again, whereas traditional ant colonies will move the brood around constantly to suit the best temperature. So when they are in larvae state, they need a humid area. When they go into pupae state, they need a dry area. But this is all different with at least my leafcutter colony. And it's really awesome that you can actually just follow a brood cycle, kind of grow up and restart with the next brood cycle and then grow that up and then restart. Something I've never seen before and it's so amazing to follow. Although it's clear that this queen is starting to become the egg-laying machine she's meant to be, I still don't really see anything from her. She always stays at the same place and don't do anything. One time I actually by mistake pushed her with a leaf when I was taking the leaf out. And I was really scared and I was like, oh no, I've killed her, she's stressing and everything will go wrong. But no, I pushed her from this side to the pot over to this side and she simply just walked back to the fungi. And as she doesn't really move at all, you can see right now she is looking here at the left side of the fungi. She has slowly done that over a couple of days. She just doesn't move at all. But after I pushed her, she actually wasn't that stressed. She just like, she just walked over casually like nothing happened. And I was sitting like, oh no, I've done something horrible. The colony will die. No, I didn't see anything from her. She just walked back to the fungi like nothing had ever happened. Wakushi has seen his queen being fed small flowers from the fungi. I personally think I might have seen something like this one time, I'm not really so sure, but most of the time she actually doesn't really interact with the workers. She's just minding her own business, relaxing and slowly getting ready to produce eggs. She really just gives me a relaxed boost to my day, whereas my other colonies go crazy when I look at them, when I take the cover off, when I do anything, she doesn't do anything. If I take this lid off, she doesn't do anything, she's just sitting there minding her own business. It's so weird because I have so many other colonies where you want to look at them, but you feel bad when you look at them because they are stressing like crazy. This colony doesn't do that at all. I mean, even with the acro queen, when I go in and look at her, if I record her, she quickly hides away, but not this girl. She's just sitting here and getting ready to produce tons and tons of eggs. 
What's even more crazy is, when the fungi hits a certain size, the colony will build a chamber for her to stay in for the rest of her life. And although I'm gonna miss my gigantic monster and it's crazy to sit here and look at her, it will be so cool to see them form this chamber, see the queen walk into the chamber and see the chamber form around her. What this means is essentially she'll be here for the rest of her life until either the fungi dies or it gets ripped apart. And she'll just stay in that chamber producing eggs till the end of her time. And that is just, it's so insane. I mean, already now she's just, she isn't doing anything. She's already preparing to sit in that chamber, although she isn't in a chamber right now. And that is just, it's insane. Like I said earlier, this colony still isn't cutting like crazy and they're actually even more picky than the Acromemex. At the moment, they only accept Japanese privet and well, that is really annoying. I keep testing with both colonies, but it seems like sometimes they just stop cutting for a few days and I'm imagining it's to let the fungi regenerate. It's like it's growing a lot and then it takes a break and then it can grow a lot again. But the problem with this is when I'm testing different leaves, I don't know if it's a test has gone through or it's just because they are picky because I thought they didn't like any leaves. Then I gave them the leaves they like and they still didn't cut it because they simply just were on a break. Meaning I have to test the same leaf two to three times before I can safely say they don't like this leaf because sometimes they just don't cut. They also cut a lot of leaves without actually feeding it to the fungi. I personally think this is an after effect on the large colony losing all the fungi rendering a big amount of the workers without jobs. This is the aftermath and it's resulted in a lot of workers going out to cut. But as they don't have any fungi to feed, the leaves are just scattered around the pot and just slowly rotting out. Now personally I don't have a problem with this, um, it's just a little bit weird because they cut and they don't eat it. But it can also be because they well, it's a big colony, there are a lot of workers, and although the fungi doesn't need to be fed, the worker still needs their carbohydrates, also known as sugar. They get this by cutting the leaves, and it would make sense that even though the fungi doesn't need to be fed, well, as there's a big amount of workers, the workers still need their daily dose of carbohydrates. So either it's because they just cut because they want to cut, or maybe they just cut because, well, they need the carbohydrates. Also, what I maybe should have said in the beginning, this is of course the Wakushi prototype pot. And what I also completely forgot to say is last week is the Acromemex colony, that is from Anne Stavey. I'm sorry Anne Stavey, I forgot to tell you, um, but I've, yeah, I'm sorry. They are from Anne Stavey and these girls are from Anne's Antique. Now this is the prototype pot from Wakushi, it's still in development. I should receive a new pot for both the Ada and the Acros, as this Ada colony is expecting to go insanely fast quite quickly. Um, but this this hot glue up here is simply because it's an old defect that Wakushi have since fixed on the newer versions. But I mean, all in all, I can't complain. This colony is slowly growing, both in numbers and in fungi, and this will probably be the last time it's really relaxing to work with the colony. Because when they explode, they really explode. And although I can't wait to see them explode, it's gonna be a lot harder to, well, keep up the maintenance, feed them, all this, because right now they just eat a half a leaf within a few days, nothing special. But seeing other colonies, they just eat so much. And already now in wintertime, it's a lot harder to find these leaves I want to give them. But yeah, only the future will say how this colony will do. All I can say right now is I'm really happy that they have survived, even though they have had such a poor start to my keeping after they got lost in post and just nearly killed the entire colony. But they have made a great recovery and I can't wait to document the next video. If they'll be around a month or two months before the next video, they probably have tripled in size. They, they may even be outgrowing the next pot. It's it's really hard to say because following the other keepers that I know that keeps Ada, from one day to another, they explode. And I can't wait for that to happen. But yeah, Holofers, that has been it for this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have some interesting facts or just if you want to say hi, I can say hi back. Either way, that has been it for this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you all in another video. Bye.